Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon. Today we're going to be doing a full playthrough of Viscounts of the West Kingdom and we are going to be including Gates of Gold and Keeper of Keys expansions into this playthrough. So this is basically everything that you could possibly uh, accumulate for Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Uh, we are playing against the Solo AI. I've gone ahead and gone through setup uh, just to get that all out of the way. The expansions don't add a lot of um, uh, necessarily new rule changes or anything like that. Uh, they're pretty simple to implement, but they do add uh, uh, some more, t you know, table presence to the game. It, this has definitely become a table hog, much like uh, many of the other uh, West Kingdom games as the expansions got added. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and get started. I am playing against the uh, Cleric AI, so they're going to be going after manuscripts. Just a quick note, uh, you'll notice that as part of my uh, setup here, I did get to uh, place a building right off the bat. Yeah, I did place the right type of building. Um, yes. Uh, <clears throat> so I've gone ahead and done that. I've chosen the one where I can dismiss someone for uh, just a single coin. So other than that, let's uh, go ahead and get started. Okay, so for our first action, you always start as the first player of the game. I'm going to go ahead and play our thief. That's going to give us uh, a single point of movement. I am going to move our, um, our track over one for placing a thief here. And um, we're going to go ahead and move our Viscount right here one movement and I am going to go ahead and spend the one coin I have to dismiss this fella here. So we can see that he gives me a rearrange action that's uh, pretty pointless at this point um, but he is going to give me an uh, additional uh, stone for the round. All right, so coming back to our player board here, you can see I'm gonna take the build action as my main action. So I have one criminal icon. Um, here I move my uh, corruption marker over, and then these two here from dismissing this individual. So that gives me three. Um, I could go ahead and uh, pay the five here, but I think what I'm gonna do is uh, increase my hand limit. So I'm just going to use the three that I'm given here by dismissing that fella and put this guy out on the board. All right, so this little guy is gonna go right here and it's gonna allow me to flip over the one uh, deed I had. Uh, so I have everything flipped right now um, and we are ready to start the AI's turn. Um, I'm gonna draw back up to my new hand limit now, which is four. <clears throat> and uh, I did acquire my King's Order card, so this is gonna allow me to gain an outsider here at some point. <clears throat> right, so what's the AI gonna do? They are essentially gonna take the build action. Um, at the moment they have one, two, and they do have one stone in hand, so they are going to be able to take the action. Uh, first they're going to dismiss where they are. So that's going to uh, dismiss this gentleman. The only thing they care about in this instance is they are going to gain a debt from the pile, so that's two for them. Uh, then they're going to move their Viscount four. One, two, three four and then they're going to take the build action which we just established they can do if not they would have flipped a deed or debt and gained a resource here's where the viscount ended up after their four movement they always want to place in the leftmost building which since we're kind of looking at it upside down is going to be this one here and they always choose their uh, leftmost um, building uh, that they have uh, available to them. So they're going to place that one down. This reveals um, a uh, little bonus on their player board. You can see here every time they take the uh, gain a card action, they're also going to take the dismiss action. 
which is exactly what they are doing because here they're gaining a card for them. That means they're gaining a uh, future scheme card. So this card with the black banner at the top is gonna go into their discard pile. And they're also going to dismiss this fella here, which means they get a discard action. And in place of the discard action, you can see they get to gain one virtue on their track. Up next for our turn, we are going to go ahead and put the trader on the board. He's uh, going to whoop, he's going to give us a trade icon, and then anytime we take the trade action, we can discard a card and gain a coin. He's also going to allow us to move one. So we will uh, simply move our guy over here one. Uh, I'm at a location where I can trade two trade icons for a gold, and uh, that's what we're going to do. So in looking at my player board here, I have one, two, three, four. Four gold icons is going to give me two gold to choose from. Um, at this point, so this is going to push over, and we're going to bring this one in. Okay, so they need to move their corruption marker down. They're going to gain another debt at this point, and they're going to move their Viscount 4, and then they're going to take their uh, player board action, which is uh, attempt to gain a manuscript. They've got one, two uh, options uh, for manuscripts, but they also have one inkwell, which is going to allow them to uh, gain that main so account's gonna go one two three four end up here and focusing on that manuscript now I just realized that during setup I failed to give them their one guild hall uh, their leftmost guild hall is always going to match up with what their uh, player board is trying to do so they're not going to have to spend that inkwell they simply have with the criminal icon and what's already on their board uh, they have the three that is needed so they'll simply claim this and this is going to give them a uh, future scheme card added to their pile. And that's also going to give them a free dismiss action based on what they've already built. So we're going to dismiss her, giving them a free rearrange action, which, according to this, gives them uh, dismissing the two rightmost outsiders and a uh, item of their choice. So let's go ahead and remove those outsiders and they are looking for inkwells to start off the game so here's their inkwell for our turn we are going to go ahead and put our king's order card down onto our board that's going to give us uh, three movement so push everybody down and just continuing along the outside of the board one two three we finally are at a spot where we can acquire some coins Okay, so after my last turn, I realized that I failed to go ahead, uh, since I took the trade action, I failed to uh, gain his bonus. So I discarded my squire and gained myself a coin, which I'm now going to use um, based on my ability here on my player board to dismiss this uh, antagonist here, who's going to give me two wild icons. I am going to have to push my corruption for doing so, but that's going to give me one, two, three, four, five. Uh, trade icons which uh, it's an equal uh, trade at this point so I'm gonna get five money for that and a six one for from the trader and a discard action so we are gonna go ahead and discard uh, yeah the abbot for now back over here to the AI these all shift over and all right so this is the new uh, starting scheme card here you can see that they are uh, basically get one of each. They will be uh, getting rid of the right two most chest tiles, the right two most um, heroes, moving one and then gaining a chest tile. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here while we're down here. That simply means for them just flipping this over. Um, that means in the future. The, any fleur-de-lis symbol up here will also count as uh, one of these other symbols. So in this instance, I would have uh, two manuscripts. So in the future, 
if they do flip over all three chess tiles, he'll start doing his player board action, which would be manuscripts, and this card would actually count as uh, double manuscripts. All right. So he is going to be getting rid of these two heroes. You always push over to the right, uh, keeping the oldest ones to the right for the purposes of the solo AI. Same thing with the chess tiles. These two are going to go away. These two will push over. And two new ones will come out. There we go. Then the AI's Viscount's going to move one, but has no effect on their action this turn. So it's back to us. On our turn, we are going to add our lender to the board here. She's going to give us two trade icons. Her ability does not come into effect until she is taken off the board, but she's going to move us one. Again, we're just going to continue along the outside of the uh, track here, and we're going to take a trade icon to get some. So as the thief comes off, we're going to gain a coin and a debt from her. And... This will push over, this will push over, and the lender here. So we have one, two, three, four uh, trade icons. I'm going to get a discard and a uh, coin for that. Let's see. I've got quite a lot of coins now. So let's go ahead and spend two more coins to give it a total of six. That's going to give us three stone. Um, and we will... Oh, do we want to discard the laborer? I'm not 100% sure. I may actually want to use him here in the near future. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Actually, yeah, I'm going to hold on to the laborer. All right. And that's pretty much going to do it. We'll draw back up. Uh, no collisions. And our drag's done. For the AI, we have this card coming off. These are going to shift over. And they are taking a manuscript action. So they're going to uh, release the person that's by them, which gives them a free discard action, which according to this is going to move, give them a virtue. Then they're gonna move three, one, two, three. And they want to then gain this manuscript, which is a three. They have one, two, three, technically four. So easily done. That means they're going to instantly get a uh, resource of their choice, which for them is an inkwell priority. So there we go. And uh, yeah, that's it. For our action, it's going to be pretty simple here. The trader is going to come off the board, unfortunately. Uh, all this is going to move over, and I'm going to ride the trade action one more time. So we're going to play the journeyman here. Uh, he doesn't do anything until he comes off the board. He's going to give us two movement here, and I've got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I'm going to trade in a coin to make it an even six so I can get three inkwells. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. AI is... What are they doing here? Okay, manuscript action. They're going to flip over. They only have a deed, which gives them... I don't know. Okay, but they haven't flipped over anything yet, and they have the most deeds, so they're going to go ahead and flip that over to gain a resource of their choice. It's going to be an inkwell, because they're trying to get the six inkwells before they stop gathering inkwells. Then they're going to move to one, two, and they're going to take the transcribe action, which they've got one, two, three, four. Yep, they can spend an inkwell to make it five. And this gives them instantly uh, discard a card, which is going to give them a flip. So they're going to get two flips out of this. So they're going to flip a deed and another debt. And that's going to give them their inkwell back that they just spent. But that's it. So uh, beginning of our turn here, we're going to bring off the King's Order card. So it's going to get returned to the pile. And I get to get a outsider for free. I think I'm going to claim this rogue mainly for her two uh, build icons. Also, at the end of the game, it'll give me a free flip if I haven't been able to flip anything yet. So she goes right there. These guys all push down. And then we're going to bring Ada 
onto the board here. Ada is a criminal, so we're going to have to pop that over like that. Uh, however, during a uh, conflict, I can gain a virtue and a resource out of her. I'm pretty sure these are uh, optional because I think I'm going to kind of go for a debt strategy here. Um, and I'll, I'll show you why here in a second. So uh, essentially we're getting two movement and then we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five trade icons. So here's our two movement, one, two, and we are now at the location where we can trade three trade icons for the ability to destroy a card. So I'm gonna spend a coin to make it a total of six and I'm gonna go ahead and cull these two uh, simpletons from my deck. So I'm going to set them off to the side. Then I am going to take a recruit action. So I'm going to spend two more coins to gain this guy, who as I collect lots of debts, he's going to give me the ability to flip them over and uh, gain lots of virtue. So he will go into my discard pile. This gets flipped up right there. And uh, we now uh, have uh, just one card in hand. So we get to draw three more cards. And this is what we're looking at. For the AI, we are pushing that off. These are pushing over. They uh, gain a resource of their choice, so they're still going after manuscripts at this point. I feel like six is pretty high, but that's, I'm sure they play tested it. Uh, they're only moving one, so they're gonna end up right here, and then they're attempting to take the build action. So they've got one, two, and that's it. Um, but they do have a stone in hand, so they'll trade that one in in order to uh, take this one off the board. The leftmost would be this one, so they're going to gain a gold for that. And uh, yes, that's it. They don't have any other build bonuses or anything like that, so that's going to do it. So it's our turn here. The lender is going to come off, so I could flip a card. I'm going to go ahead and grab a chest tile. I'm going to claim this one, and I think think yeah we're gonna put it right here in the middle right yeah yeah I like that so we're gonna shift these guys over um, and then we're going to play another criminal so this is pushing us over here dangerously but remember I'm okay with taking debts because of my debt collector here um, he's gonna be able to help me balance it out and yeah, I don't know if the strategy is going to work or not, but we shall see. Okay, so at this point, I have one point of movement, and I have two uh, wild icons. So let's take a look at what I'm going to do with that. All right, so with my one point of movement, I'm going to move right over here, and I'm going to take a build action. Um, because uh, these public buildings are kind of first come, first serve, so I'm going to try and quickly get to them uh, and secure those uh, big chunks of victory points. So in order to gain uh, this one, I need just to give up one. So this one's going to come off the board, which means my hand size goes back down to three. But I only have to spend two building icons, which I have with the two criminals. So this now goes over here. I don't get to trigger that again. Um, but I now gain this. This is going to give me an instant flip. Um, so I don't need to, but I'm going to go ahead and flip over my, uh, my debt. And then I have this, this ongoing bonus for the rest of the game. So, um, yep. And that's pretty much it. And that's seven guaranteed victory points that I have acquired now, uh, for the game. So, uh, that is pretty much going to do it. I'm wondering whether or not... I want to, no, I can't afford the missionary up there. So yeah, my turn's over. I already am at three because my hand size reduced. So it's back right. to the AI. So the AI is pushing over here. And all right, so they are uh, not really gonna get anything out of this. So this goes there. Then they're moving three, one, two, three. And then they wanna take the, um, place workers into the castle action. So let's count up their fleur de lis symbols. One, two, and that's it. So, um, oh, 
I apologize, they do have one gold, so they do have three. They're going to turn in that one gold, and that means they're going to be able to place two people into right, the cast. So since they ended up in that wedge, even though they're on the outside, they're going to place two workers in here. That does not fire off anything else, so that's going to right. end their turn. So, uh, for our turn, the journeyman's going to come off. Uh, I'm going to choose to, uh, with this symbol, pick up a King's Order card, and then this will push their... Uh, effectively firing off um, a collision at the end of the round. I'm going to bring the abbot out here uh, and then uh, so I'm going to have two movement and I'm going to have two uh, wild symbols here which uh, I will make use of here in just a second. Pretty pretty low-key turn for me um, but yeah. Alright so we're going to move one, two, and we're going to take the build action. So we already have two of those icons. I have a stone I can spend, and I'm going to get this back out here. That's going to give me a manuscript or an inkwell, and I have my uh, whole, yeah, I have my uh, hand of four back again. So basically, the building I just took off, I've now put back on. Um, yeah, I don't need the Huntsman, um, so yeah, we're just going to pass on him. All right, as I am resolving my collision here, I have some optional stuff I could do. I actually don't want to move because I want the additional coins. I want to go ahead and gain the additional deck cards for when uh, my deck collector comes out. So I'm going to go ahead and stay there. One, two, three, and this, uh, I do get a resource of my choosing, so, ooh, what am I thinking? Maybe some gold will even things out. All right, I also have this, but in order to do this, I would not have to have any criminal icons, which uh, is not the case, so that doesn't come into effect. He does not have any, the AI does not have any criminal icons, so he gets one virtue, and that's pretty much it. Um, these reset now. And I get to draw back up to four. I'm going to need to shuffle, so we'll do that. For the AI, they are going to push over here. And what do they got? All right. So they are going to, uh, they have to move this. So they're going to have a collision now, um, which is going to uh, allow Ada here to fire off. I'm going to get another resource of my choice, and I may choose to push myself virtuous this time. Uh, I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, they are going to get a future scheme card. They're going to move their person one. And then they want to take the manuscript action, which for them, they've got one, two, three. Uh, they've got tons of inkwells over here, but the manuscript that they are sitting at happens to be right here. So they're going to claim this one. And they just about have a full set now. Um, they're going to get a deed for that and that's it apologies that was not it they need to go ahead and gain another deed they get a resource of their choice which is going to be one more manuscript I mean inkwell uh, and then I'm going to push over uh, one but again I also get Ada's ability here um, so She's going to allow me to push and gain a resource of my choosing, and we'll do, uh, we'll say another building. So Ada's going to come off here. Uh, our thief is going to push over. Abbott's going to push over. So now his one is equal to two, and we're going to bring out our financier. So instantly we're going to get to discard a card. Yeah, let's discard the trader here uh, and get two coins. All right, then I'm going to move three, and just to note, I've got one, two um, manuscript icons, three with the thief. Yep. So with my three movement, I'm going to come down one, two, three, and then spend a coin to move a third. And then I've got three manuscripts. I'll spend two additional inkwells to claim this one right here, which is going to give me endgame scoring on all uh, of these icons I have at the end of the game. Also, 
I've now uh, activated one of my manuscript board abilities, being able to trade in a resource in place of a coin. <clears throat> Um, I don't have any interest in the strong man, so I'm going to draw up to my hand limit, and my turn is done. AI is pushing over, and they're going to gain two resources of their choice. One of those is going to be an inkwell, and then the next one's going to be a stone. All right, then they're going to move their uh, person two and take the build action. So they're going to go one, two. They actually only had, including their criminal icon, two build icons, but they did just acquire a stone. That's going to give them their third. So they're going to build their third and final workshop here on this guy right here, which is going to push them, give them a virtue. Uh, and that's it. Yeah, nobody has closed any links yet or anything like that. So they're all done. Uh, as the thief comes off the board, I'm going to gain a debt which is fine and a coin all right and then we Abbott's gonna push over financiers gonna push over and we are gonna bring out our debt collector so he now gives us the ability to start flipping over these debts uh, and gaining uh, some some coinage for that and also some virtue uh, he does however uh, come onto the board so I'm gonna have to push that like that so let's go ahead and just uh, take care of his stuff here. Um, I believe I can do all three of these at once. So I'm going to flip over all three of them. That's going to give me three resources, three coins, and three movement on my uh, my thing here. <clears throat> so let's think about what we want to claim. All right, so I gained some resources, gained my coins, pushed my thing over. We will resolve that in a little bit. I'm gaining two movement at this point. I'm actually going to spend a coin to move a third and then take the place workers action, which we'll see here in just a second. So I'm just going to stay in the center. One, two, three. I uh, paid that coin. And actually, no, I don't think I did. Um, all right. So there's the coin that I've paid, and now I am going to dismiss this overseer for a single coin. It's gonna give me a free shuffle action, so I'm actually gonna rearrange my board so that the abbot is at the beginning, uh, followed by the debt collector and the financier. That way I'm gonna get my double uh, cleric icons here uh, again. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, so I now have one, two with the uh, criminal icon from before and I'm gonna spend three gold to get to five to be able to put three workers into the thing here putting three in here is instantly gonna push one to each outside and one coming up the middle here I am going to take a King's order card instead of one of these guys well let me see what this guy is Ooh. The grifter's actually not that bad of an uh, bad of a deal, but um, I'm going to take the king's order card for right now. Stick with that. Um, okay. And do I want to purchase the grifter while I'm here? I could do both. Um, actually, yes. I kind of like this idea because I have now claimed. I'm looking for those cleric icons. So I'm going to pay three, I'm going to add him to my discard pile, and there we go. All right, Racketeer. Okay, and I'm going to draw. There we go, and uh, our turn is over. I lied, our turn is not over. Um, I wasn't able to push this over to get another debt, which is what I was hoping for. Um, actually, I did get a debt from the Grifter. So... Anyways, I'm going to gain a deed that's going to come down here and a coin. And uh, the AI does have a criminal icon on their board, so they're going to gain one corruption. Now my turn is over. So here we are giving them their corruption they just earned, pushing this over. And they want to dismiss... So they're going to dismiss uh, this guy, which is going to give them a virtue. So there you go. 
They don't get anything else for that. They're going to move three and then take the manuscript action. One, two, three. Oh, are you kidding me? They're taking the manuscript that I want. So you can see here they're going one, two, three. They can easily claim that one. They've got one, two, three, four manuscripts without having to spend any ink wells. They're going to claim this guy. So they now have a full set. That's going to give them no points for outsiders, which they don't claim. So uh, that card doesn't do him any good. It uh, doesn't do me any good either. I wanted that one because I was going to start accumulating purple workers or uh, purple outsiders. Anyways, that's his turn. Um, All right. Uh, back to the financer. Comes off the board. Debt collector pushes down. Abbott pushes right here. I'm going to throw the king's order card out here. That's going to give me a movement of three. And I also have a debt that I can flip over with the debt collector. So that's going to push there. I'm going to get a coin and an inkwell. Um, and we're going to go three. I've got one, two, three uh, cleric icons. So three movement. One, two, three. Three cleric icons plus four inkwells traded in. Allows me to pick up this bad boy right here. Boom. And I can instantly gain any three or four level manuscript. All right. And so I am going to claim, yeah, this one, this yellow one here, which is going to instantly allow me to place two workers on any first level of the uh, castle here. And let me just confirm that that movement icon means move one of your workers from one first tier section of the castle to an adjacent first tier. So, okay, so that's not quite as lucrative as I would have hoped. Um, yeah, but let's just do this. So I'm going to put these guys down right here. Uh, one will hop up here, and so we'll push and push, and I'm going to take this movement action to push right there. My hope is to just get a single person up there into the middle and claim that uh, castle leader card. But I feel like that was a pretty good turn right there. Um, so yeah, right. so they're losing their criminal icon. And what do they want to do this time? They get to flip something. Um, they have flipped the least deeds. So there we go. And then they're going to move to one, two, and take a manuscript action. This one's going to be pretty boring, except, nope. So they're just going to get this three here. That pushes there. That gives them two gray, two blue, one yellow, and one black. So they have a decent manuscript collection going, but they don't really, they're not really scoring much else uh, except in workshops. So pretty light turn for them. So with my new uh, ability I've unlocked here, I can spend any three resources to rearrange. So I'm going to spend three stone here to take a rearrange action. And I'm going to put... Yeah, the abbot right here, the debt collector right here, and the king's order card on the end. Now I'm going to push the king's order card off. That's going to put it up here. I get to claim uh, a person here, and I think what I want to do, they all have the exact same icons, so I'm going to take the envoy here. All right, uh, debt collector pushes over. Abbott again is lined up with the chest, and I'm going to bring out the grifter. So the grifter is going to force one over here instantly, but I also placed uh, criminal icons on here, so this has to go one, two more. Um, all right. Yeah. So, and I have a movement of three. But I'm going to be getting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five out of the. Oh, so I'm one short on the ink wells. Interesting. So I get three movement, one, two, three, and I have five uh, icons. I'm going to spend those five here. This is going to give me victory points at the end of the game for the trade symbols, which I have a fair amount, and I haven't 
gotten rid of any. So um, yeah, that's not a bad little deal there. Um, do I want to do anything with her? No, I can't. Um, I don't feel like purchasing her at the moment. So yeah, uh, we now have a complete set and we can start working towards a second set. Push, push, push. What are we doing? We're building. All right, so they're going to dismiss, actually going to dismiss uh, this girl here who is gonna give them a shuffle action, but you can see for them, the shuffle action actually does, uh, pushes this way first and then this way. So they line up. Um, that's gonna fire off some stuff for me and they are going to go ahead and reshuffle so we're going to do that real quick then they're going to move their uh viscount four so one two three four and then they want to take the build action so they have access to one two that's it and they don't have any stone on hand so they're actually not going to take the build action they're going to uh, take the flip and gain a resource action, which is going to be a stone for them. Um, and what is see, what have they flipped at this point? They flipped two of those and two of those. They have more deeds, so they will flip their deed. All right, so they, they have accomplished that. One, two, three, four, I just moved them around the board. Again, they couldn't afford any of the buildings because they only have two building icons, and now we have to do this. So they're gonna claim another uh, deed. They're gonna claim a resource of their choice, which again is now they're working on stone. Uh, and I do have a criminal icon, so my thing's gonna push over one. These will reset, and we're done. So debt collector's gonna come off, I'm fine with that. Abbott's gonna push down. Uh, technically, he counts. Um, but we're going to bring out the rogue. She's going to give us one point of movement. I am going to be spending a coin to move uh, a second spot, one, two. Um, but basically, she's giving us uh, two build icons. Uh, the rest of her stuff happens at the end of the game. All right, so I spent that extra coin so I could go one, two, and end up up here. I'm going to do the whole public uh, building swap again. So this comes out there. This one's going to have to go back onto my player board. But I now have claimed this one. I have one, two build icons from her and a uh, criminal icon. So I simply had to spend one stone to be able to claim this card. That's 11 VP at the end of the game. I instantly get to claim a chest tile. And then I can start flipping cards instead of gaining those hero cards, which I'm not too keen on. So this is much better for me in my opinion. All right, looking up here at our chest tiles we have, none of them really speak to me, um, but this one at least I can put on the end and my outsider who is currently in the first position will be there soon and I'll be able to take advantage of that. All right, so some quick housekeeping. Uh, some of you may have noticed this earlier, but uh, the AI sneakily built all three workshops, which means they should get the uh, specialized building card here. Uh, this doesn't do anything for them. They just are gonna get the end game VP. So let's put that with their stuff there. All right. Okay, so criminal icon, this is pushing one. They are gonna gain a future scheme card. All right and here they get to dismiss when they do so. So upon dismissal, they get a rearrange action, which for them is going to be uh, two outsiders and a resource of their choice. That's going to give them three stone total. All right, they're moving their Viscount one, and then they're taking the manuscript action. So, uh, Again, they have a very simple, straightforward here. They've got one, two, three, exactly ton of stuff, but this is gonna give them uh, another blue. So they actually have their third of a single color. So they're gonna claim this one here, which is again, just really end game victory points for them because they didn't use those icons ever. Um, 
and they get to flip a deed or a debt. And so it's going to be a debt claiming a stone in the process. All right. All right. So the abbot's going to come off. Grifter comes down. Rogue comes down. We're going to put the lender out uh, for one movement. And I'm going to be taking the build action. So I'm going to get one, two, three uh, build icons from my board here um, and one movement. Okay. So I'm going to take one movement here and I'm going to put back out um, the one. Unfortunately, I'm going to pay two coins to uh, dismiss that fella, which the house I'm putting out um, does is that. So I'm going to get two rearrange actions here because I'm dismissing this guy just to get his his build icon there and only have to pay one stone to do so. And so who do I want to... I'm going to put the lender at the end and put the grifter at the beginning, kind of swap those two. Just take one rearrange action in the process. Now, since we uh, completed that, both me and the AI gain a deed, which is what I want. I want the deed pile to run out faster than the uh, debt pile so that I score those VP and he doesn't get any. So um, that's kind of my reasoning for going there. So here's the two uh, deeds. We each get one. And let's see here. I dismissed this person so I could purchase that guy. Nah, he doesn't do anything for me. Oh, so this pushes over. There's a lot I want to do, but I'm also trying to end the game as quickly as possible here. Ooh, so they are pushing twice. Boom, boom. Uh, they're going to gain a debt. All right. They're going to move four. One, two, three, four. And then they want to take the manuscript action. So they're actually going to have to spend a lot here. So they've got one, two, just three uh, manuscript cleric icons. Uh, four movement puts them around the board one two three four and they're going to be going after this uh, guy right here so they've got three they finally have to spend some of these inkwells so they're going to spend three of them to claim this black one which gives them no just two blacks all right and uh, they're going to score some vp for their flipped over deeds which is not good because they've got quite a lot all right the lender is going to come off the board and so I'm going to gain a chest tile. I think what I'm going to do is actually do that one there. So I've essentially gotten rid of one. I'm giving up 4 VP at the moment, but I'm hoping I can get it back. So um, that should have been right there. I was looking at what was going to happen. So when I push this over, um, gained a coin, that will fire off at the end of the round. Now I effectively have... Uh, three more icons and my journeyman here will give me a total of five six if you include the criminal icon there so i've got six uh six trade icons i can spend so with my two movement i'm going to go one two and then i can dismiss this fellow here for one it's going to give me a free reshuffle which I guess is fine, uh, but it's also giving me two more. So I have eight uh, icons to deal with. So that's going to give me four uh, ink wells. One, two, three, four. Okay. And let's see if I want to purchase this guy. Uh, the Friar for two. Um, let's see, I'm gaining points for that at the end of the game. So yes, I am going to spend two to recruit this Friar because he's also going to push me uh, in the right direction. So boom, push over my Virtue there. And yeah. Let's look at our All right, collision. so with our collision, we're going to get two coins. We're going to get one of each type of card, which, again, is kind of what I'm looking for. And then I give them a rearrange action, which for them gets rid of two outsiders and a uh, resource of their choice. 
and for them that's going to go back to being an inkwell. And these reset, and that's it. So push, push, push. What happens here? All right. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. All right. So they're being very virtuous. There we go. And they're going to be moving one, and then they want to take the cleric action. And so that's a seven. Oh my goodness. And that's going to give them. No, just two yellows. Okay, man, they're really crushing it in this category. Okay, so they've got one, two, three, four because of this bonus here. And then they have uh, five, so they've got two inkwells they can spend. And what this is going to do is allow them to put four people into any one lower territory. We already did this ourselves. I have to figure out, I have to remember what their priority is for where they're going to place them. So he's going to put four workers right here. Uh, that's essentially going to end up looking like this at the end of the day. So they're going to get a stone and an inkwell from that action. And then this is going to push them up there like so. And they're going to get two uh, virtue, uh, two virtue push. So one two which is going to fire off a collision back here and I believe yep everything else looks good. All right so you can see they're having a collision here I do have a uh, criminal icon so I gain a corruption but they're gaining again another deed which is uh, good for everything and another inkwell back all right so our rogue is going to come off the board, the grifter is going to push down, the journeyman is going to push down, and we're going to bring out uh, Ada here. All right, so Ada uh, is going to force this to go over twice. One, two. That's okay. Uh, she's going to give me two movement, and... Uh, have two wild icons so yeah Let's see we can think about what we want to do with that so with my two movement I'm gonna go one two right here and I'm going to dismiss this fella for one it's gonna give me a shuffle action um, so I'm gonna take that real quick but he's also giving me a third uh, criminal icon third wild so I have th three wilds and then I'm gonna spend my two gold to get five to put three workers out in this area so one two three all right so that's gonna put one here one here whoops and move one up here I am going to choose to gain that guy to get a rearrange action maybe Yeah, plus he's got the symbol I need. So, yeah, we're going to claim him for free. Free rearrange action. I'm going to look at that here in a second. Um, and then the, yeah, that's it, actually. Nothing else fires off. I still want to push up into the castle leader option. So, all right. Um, let's see here. There's this guy. And do we want to purchase this guy for three? Actually, I don't have uh, three coins. However, I could. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. No, I think we'll. All right, so wait. this is what I ended up on, uh, how I chose to rearrange my board here. Although, actually, now I don't have this chest anymore the way I wanted it. So we're going to do it like that. Yeah, that looks good. AI is doing what? Oh, I forgot to reset these. We did do all that though. Okay, uh, one, two, and then he's flipping over a debt. Good for him. That's gonna gain him an inkwell. Okay, 
He's moving two, one, two, and then, oh, he keeps stealing what I need. One, two, that's going to put him here. So he's got, he needs four. He's got one, two, three, four. Um, so that's going to give him a black. And yet one, two, three blacks, which means he's going to take this from me, which I was going for. Ugh. All right. Um, okay. He's completely changing my strategy now. Uh, but that's it. That's all he does. Um, and he's crushing it on manuscripts. But he is the cleric AI, so it's to be expected. For me here, the journeyman's coming off the board now. I could move all this stuff around. Instead, I'm going to make use of this action and this uh, ability here to flip over... Yep. No, I'm gonna flip over my thing to get an inkwell. Yeah, all right. Okay, so I did that. He pushes down, she pushes down, and then the lowly abbot here is going to come on the board. It's gonna give me two movement. Now, one, two, three, yeah. So with my two movement, I'm going to go one, two, and then I'm going to spend a coin to come down here. All right. Uh, I need four uh, manuscripts. So I've got one, two, three, four on my board already without having to do anything. I'm going to claim this blue one here, which is going to give me the ability to flip over uh, something else. I'm trying to go for one more set here before he closes the door on me. All right, AI, what are you doing? Okay, so he's removing some heroes and some chest tiles. I could have used that earlier. Okay, uh, he's moving his Viscount one, and then he wants to flip over this chest tile. Okay, and that's it, pretty simple. Rifter is gonna come off. Uh, Ed is gonna move over, Abbott is gonna move over, and then I didn't think I were gonna, would use him, but we're going to bring the friar out. That's going to push that that way. And now I have one, two, three icons there. Where can I get a chest from? I need to find someone who's can give me a chest. Way to pick up a chest. Anyways, uh, okay, so we've got two movement. And one, two, three cleric icons. I'm going to overspend a little bit here, but I think it's okay. So I'm going to go one, two, and then spend two more. Actually, I only have one coin, but I can spend a resource to an exchange of a coin. So that's going to get me around the corner here. And now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Spend some of my ink wells pick up this guy allows me to instantly add three people into the castle here one two three I'm going to place them in this lower level here so one goes there one of these guys pushes up and now there's three here so I get to claim a card or kill a card um, I think we're gonna claim this one here just simply for his symbol. All right. And that will then force these guys to go boom, boom, and boom. And now there's four people here. Um, do I want to kick him out to give him two coins? No, I am going to kick myself out to claim two coins. And I think that's the only spot that we need to do that. And so, yeah, we are... Uh, finished. Ooh, I do like that. Okay. All right, all right, all right. So the AI is pushing over. And they want to... I just realized I hadn't claimed my castle leader card. I just did that. They're going to claim two resources, which is going to be one inkwell and one stone. 
then they are going to move to one, two, and there's actually no free locations to build there. So uh, what they are going to end up doing is taking a manuscript. Of course they are. So they've got one, two, three, four. They need six, so they're going to spend two there. Oh, no, because they've got this card. They get that icon uh, permanently. So they get one inkwell back, and they're going to claim the gray one which uh, is going to give them some endgame scoring, but also give them one, two, three gray ones now. Uh, so they're claiming this manuscript. And so my idea of trying to keep up with them and steal some of their manuscripts away from them is not working. My uh, strategy may very well fall short here in the end. But that's going to do Whitey. it for the So we're getting close to the end game here. I really want to uh, complete... My last set here um, to try and keep up with the AI, but I need some manuscripts here, and I'm gonna make a go at the last public building because I think that maybe puts me over the edge. So, all right, um, uh, Ada comes off, so nothing uh, happens there. Um, uh, the friar here is giving me three plus her two. Um, and her one point of movement. So I've got one, two, three, four, five uh, without having to do anything else. All right, I will go one and then move up here for two. So I had to spend a coin for my movement. Um, and then, uh, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and spend another coin. I could release that guy, but he's pushing my thing in the wrong direction. So um, that's gonna give me six total. And so that's gonna give me three Inkwells, again, I don't really have any uh, interest in uh, another debt collector. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to stop right there pretty All quick. Right. What are they doing? They are uh, going to gain a resource of their choosing, so it's going to be an inkwell. Okay, um, and then they're going to move their person one, and then they want to take the build action. Uh, all right, so they've got one, two, three because of this uh, special ability down here. So, wait, one, two, three, four, five. But they've got lots of stone here, so they're going to spend two of their stone to put out uh, another one of these guys. It's going to go right here. It's going to get their stone right back. And that, that pretty much is their turn. All right, so Abbott's going to come off the board here. We're going to push down, and we're going to bring out... Yeah, I could use some money here. So we're going to bring out our finance here. I can discard a card. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to discard the thief, actually. Uh, gain two coins, which I will need here shortly. And then um, I can move three. So, yeah. And I'm not actually 100% sure what I'm going to do. So we're going to keep this pretty simple. One, two, three. Uh, I'd love to take the rearrange action, but uh, I can't because he's got the build icon. And I need, I'm doing the trade icon, so I'm going to spend a coin and gain two to get my fourth uh, symbol and get two stone out of it. All That's right. it. AI is gaining virtue, moving that person three, one, two, three, and then they want to put people into the castle. So they're going to have one, one, two, and that's it. Just two and no gold. So they're actually not going to be able to do that, so they're going to go after a manuscript. One, two, three. Okay, which they will only need four. So they've got one, two there, three, four. Okay, so they've got so it. So their movement's going to go one, two, three. They're going to want to claim this uh, foursome here, which doesn't really uh, do anything for them other than just push their virtue over. Um, so yeah, 
going to give him a few minor points at the end of the game. So our Friar is going to come off the board. Uh, Lender is going to push, and Financier is going to push, and our, we're going to bring out yeah our Debt Collector here. So we are going to have to push this once. I actually don't have any debts that need to be paid, so I can't utilize his effect. Um, and I just I'm going to utilize his one icon and two movement. One, two, three. Yeah, I'm going to have to spend a coin. All right, from way up here, I'm going to come down one, two. That's his movement. And three, so I'll spend a coin for that. And then he's giving me one. I have an all-time one here, so that's two. And I have five inkwells in my possession. So I'm going to spend all of them. This is going to give me my second set. I also will be putting out now my uh, third building type. What do I want to put it on here? I think let's put it on. Uh, can I get a bonus anywhere? Um, that would give me a bonus. I'm pretty sure I get to place this anywhere. It doesn't have to be, say, for example, here. Uh, or any of these, um, but one, two, three, four, five, six. yeah, I'm gonna need two turns, so I think we're gonna put that right there like that. I get to flip over a deed, and yeah, that is going to and that action but I also do get to claim this card here which at this point is really just giving me some victory points at the end of the game back to the AI here hopefully they don't trigger the end game before I can accomplish my task okay <clears throat> so they are dismissing the debt collector here which is simply going to uh, fire off Ooh, that okay no, I think we're okay um, all right, so they dismissed. They're going three, one, two, three, and then they want to take the manuscript action, which uh, is pretty straightforward for them. One, two, three. That's going to give them uh, just two inkwells, which is uh, points at the end of the game for them. So it's basically two free VP uh, that they're getting, which is not cool. All right, they need to complete this collision action. So they're gonna get one of each type, uh, which may help us a little bit here because they might not be able to flip this debt over. Uh, I do need to check and make sure I still have the most debts. And they're gonna gain a deed, a resource of their choosing, which will be actually gold now because they've accumulated everything else to their max. And I get a reshuffle action. Okay, so I don't think I'm actually going to take uh, or bother with the reshuffle action here. So <clears throat> uh, what I'm going to do is my lender is going to come off the board here. I am going to choose to gain a tile. Yeah, because it's like four victory points. I gain two by flipping this over. So the question is, what do we want to choose? I do want to go ahead and get a third one this late in the game. So I think I'm going to take this one here because I'm about to put one of my outsiders in that slot. So my financier moves over, my debt collector moves over, and we are going to put our rogue right there. That means we're going to get a thing of our choosing. I'm going to take a stone even though I don't think I'm going to need it. Uh, so I'm planning on taking the build action. So I've got one, two, three, four up here without doing anything else. Okay, turns out I actually did need that uh, last piece of stone. It didn't matter what the resource was, but I'm going to move one. The rogue only gave me one point of movement, but I want to be up here. So in order to go up, I need to spend a coin, and I'm going to use my ability from my manuscript board to spend a stone to move up here. Then I'm going to take the build action, and I'm going to go after this public building here. So this one requires six building um, uh, actions here. And 
allows me to put that there. This, unfortunately, is going to come back onto my board. I might be able to sneak a couple on here at the end. Um, but I had one, two, three, four on my board. Here's two more stone that I'm going to be spending, and I have acquired all of the public buildings. Hopefully, that's what pushes me over the edge. Um, I don't have any use, really. And actually, let me check. Let me count up here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many does the AI have? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So if we end the game with the uh, prosperity card, then I will win that points, those points. And there's two left. So, hmm. <laughs> Yep, nothing really to do. I don't really want to gain that debt collector right now. So, uh, nothing else to do but draw up to my hand size and um, continue. Right, so at this point, I would be okay with the end of the game triggering. I feel like I'm in pretty good shape with that last public building card. All right, so he wants to flip a card over. I need to do some counting here. He's flipped over one, two, three of those. And more of those, so he's going to flip over a deed, which he's going to get points for at the end of the game. All right, he's going to move his player two, one, two, and then he wants to take the manuscript action, which he's got one, two, three, four. So pretty uneventful. He is just, again, racking up the resources here. He now has just a whole bunch of points here, a whole bunch of resources. I actually need to go ahead and end this game because it's getting a little out of control. So my financier is going to come off the board. The debt collector will shift. The rogue will shift. And I'm going to put another uh, outsider here and claim myself a stone back in doing so. So now I have one, two, three, four. Oh, but I covered this back up. So I just have four. Uh, icons without doing anything else and one point of movement. In an attempt to move the game towards its ending condition here, I'm going to push here and build uh, one of my five point buildings. I am going to have to give up my stone I just earned, but I can actually want to spend this one, give my Viscount a little bit extra movement. That's going to give me a deed I can claim, uh, and there's no other bonuses that I can collect at this point. And I have no interest in the strong man, so I'm gonna leave him beat. What are we doing now? Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so he is dismissing uh, the goldsmith here. So the goldsmith gives him a free rearrange action, which we know for him is gaining a resource and removing two outsiders. Okay, he's going to move four, and then he's going to take the build action. He has one, two, uh, three, four build icons, um, but he's got plenty of stone. So he's going to go one, two, three, four. There's only one slot left for him to fill. He's got four icons on his board, so he's going to spend three stone, right? Yeah, to build his last... Thing. This is really getting out of control. I needed to have ended this a long time ago. This is going to give him the ability to flip something, which will be one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. So he's got more of these. Yep. So he gets a flip out of that. And yeah, that's all he gets. So I am going to attempt to trigger the end game here. Uh, this will push. The rogue will push over here, which allows me to gain a coin and uh, push this, which will start my collision. Then I'm going to do that. Um, okay, and then we're going to put Ada out here on the board. So unfortunately, that means this is going to push one. But I think I can get it pushed back over. 
So at this point, I think I'm looking for build icons. One, two, three, four. Uh, no other way of uh, getting build icons, but I've got some workshops I can build. All right, so Ada was giving me two, but I've unlocked my additional body count movement, so I can go three. One, two, three. And I'm going to build, let's see, what workshop do I want to build? Oh, that's not going to, yeah, I think that'll work. All right, so I'm going to build this workshop here that's going to give me, it's going to push me back over this way. And then uh, both of us are going to get a stone, which is not super helpful at this point. It's only giving him a victory point. And then uh, we need to resolve our collision. Ada here during the collision is going to allow me to push over and gain a resource of my choosing. I don't think it really matters. Uh, I just want two, I think two, uh, at the end of the game. All right, and so she gives me that. Also, I unlock this one. Now, this one says if you don't have any uh, criminals on your board, you can move it over to the left. What I realized, and I failed to do this earlier, is that this card, this symbol, does not mean if you don't have one. This means you can ignore one criminal. So this was a mistake I made earlier in the game. Uh, this allows me to ignore one criminal icon as well as draw a card. So I'm going to go ahead and do the card, but I can ignore her icon, which means I can effectively do this, which means I'm no longer taking a debt. Um, so. I'm going to claim this last card. This means the prosperity card uh, comes out. This is now uh, effective. And so we're uh, essentially he's going to get one more turn, and then we're each going to get the final round, and that's going to be it. So, um, yeah. I just need to see if I can, how I'm going to maximize my final turn here. Uh, before that happens, the AI gets to take, uh, finish out this round. So they are, ooh, they're flipping a chest over. So they're going to remove some things off the board over there. That doesn't matter. Their movement doesn't really matter. And then they're going to flip this, which is going to give them their full amount of victory points. I'm trying to, sitting here thinking about it way too much, trying to figure out what the best course of action is here. but going to push over here that's going to push that we will uh, gain a coin for that Ada pushes over and I think I'm going to throw the fryer up there uh, that's going to give us a push there none of this is really going to matter but I've got two movement from him and I've got one two uh, build icons there and two stone in hand so just keep that in mind. So I had two movements. So I'm going to go one, two, and then I want to go one, two, three to end up here. So that's all my money, but I can't take it with you. So I'm spending all my money and then I have one, two uh, icons there. Um, yeah, that's not helping me. So I can spend one more stone to put out one more workshop right here. That's going to give me the ability to kill a card. So I'm going to kill my King's Order card, which allow me to dismiss a uh, outsider. I'm also going to get three coins for that. Again, I don't know why, but I'm going to dismiss this guy, which will give me a corruption, doesn't matter, but allows me to flip over one of my deeds. <clears throat> this is the final turn of the game. The AI is, okay, shifting over, moving one, which actually gives me a rearrange action, um, but I can't do anything with that uh, at this point, so. Um, and then he wants to take a manuscript action, which he's got one, two, three, four. He definitely has four. Um, so he's going to gain this. I don't think this symbol does anything for him. Uh, so it just adds to his collection. 
All right. So I think we are, that's it. I'm going to calculate the score and then I'll let you know how we did. So here is the final score. Uh, the AI was victorious. You can see 162 to 154. I actually had him eclipsed uh, until he got points for his resources. And I think this may be something that might need some tweaking in the future because since he uh, is getting so many extra bonus icons from his chest tiles um, he really didn't need to use up his resources like he normally would have so he had I think it was like 14 resources at the end of the game yeah because he has at 148 but so that's going to do it for our playthrough of Viscounts of the West Kingdom again uh, he really ran away with the manuscripts I mean this giant pile here is all of his manuscripts he scored 62 points um, all from manuscripts. Now I scored 41, which wasn't bad. I was trying to kind of beat him to the punch on everything, but he ended up getting all the cleric bonus cards and I really just was not successful in that strategy. The, uh, you know, the public building cards, which is uh, 33 points at the end of the day, if you get all three, was a big swing for me. Uh, but as I mentioned, him gaining 14 points at the very end of the game for uh, unspent resources, was you know the the kicker i i surpassed him with the public buildings and then he came back and finished me off i think it really the public buildings did also hurt because i was putting buildings back and uh to you know accumulate these points which can be quite a lot um you know you're having to to rebuild those buildings so i don't know how whether or not going after the public buildings was the best strategy or not um, but yeah, that uh, w was really a high scoring game in general uh, on both sides, but I really let the game go a way too long as far as the AI was concerned and just let them continue to rack up manuscripts, which uh, just, and, and resources at the end of the game. Um, like I mentioned, his uh, ability to get additional uh, icons because of the chest tiles means he's not using the resources as much, which means this uh, victory point for one for each resource at the end of the game is uh, almost overpowered so something that they may need to consider putting in some errata on how to do the final scoring for for solo play that's just my opinion um, i've actually yet to beat the solo ai using these new expansions so <clears throat> Uh, all right, that's going to do it. If you enjoyed this playthrough, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.